Sunday, uh, I, I hope you caught the, the message on Sunday. If not, go to YouTube, Pastor James and Sabrina Wilkinson. Listen to the message from Sunday called Now. It's an awesome message. I've listened to it a couple of times myself. It's helping me out. Uh, another thing I want to say is later on that day, my wife posted something uh, with me and my goddaughter kids and um, and also my, um, my little nephew. Listen, we, we had fun. Uh, you know, my aunt right here, she was right, she was watching us. I decided to uh, make them a slip and slide homemade style. I, I, I went and pulled out a tarp, put it down in the ground, uh, got my water hose, turned it on, got some, um, um, got some no name baby shower, I mean baby shampoo, no tears though, <laughs> put it out there and, and, and they had a good time and I got wet in the rain so I went ahead on and just slipped and slid with them. But I had a good time, and I wasn't sore neither the next day. Praise ye the Lord. Mm -hmm. But I did have a good time. I had a great time. And let me tell you something. As adults, sometimes we need to do some stuff that pulls out that inner child so that we can laugh and be reminded that in our Father's eyes, we are still his children. Amen. So I'll probably have them all again one day this summer. Mm -mm. I ain't saying for a couple I may have them again, and hey, we're going to do the same thing, because right after that, I made sure... No, nope, yeah, that would be a no. Don't worry about that. <laughs> she ain't going to be here. It's going to be me and the boys, and look, we're going to slip and slide, put hot dogs, hamburgers on the grill, and just have a good time, but I want to encourage you. The Bible says, laughter do it good like a medicine. A merry heart is good like a medicine. Amen. You need to laugh, you need to have a good time, 
quit being uptight. Some of you, you may be feeling pressure from being in the house this long, around your family this long, around your spouse this long, because ain't nobody been to work, but you need to do something different. You need to laugh. Go outside, have a good time. I played in the rain. I'll be 50 mm. in like 40 some days. I'll be 50, but guess what? I'm going to slip and slide for my 50th birthday. <laughs> All you. right. Yep, that's what I'm going to do on my birthday. I'm going I'm to I'm put the tarp out of it. And hey, my, my wife, you know, I'm just going to slide, slide in me up. She says, you ain't got to slide with me, baby. I just need you to video. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, all right, all right. Okay, y'all, let's get down to why we came here tonight. But I just want to let you know, hey, do have a good time. Jesus said in John 10 and 10, said, but for the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come so they may have life and enjoy it more abundantly. Enjoy your life. All right, well, let's pray and let's get ready to move into the second half of this word that we did last Wednesday. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you tonight. We thank you. We praise you. We give you glory and honor. We esteem you high. Father God, we thank you right now, God, because you've given us everything that we need to do your will and your good pleasure. Father, tonight we pray that you increase as we decrease. Father, that our eyes, every eye, is open to see what the word is saying to us tonight. Every ear is anointed to hear what the word will speak to us. Every heart is prepared like that, a good soil, ready to receive a seed of the word. That seed will be planted, rooted, and grounded. That seed will take root. That seed will produce a plant that produces a tree that will produce harvest that will last from one generation to the next. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Uh, before we get started in the word, going back to the book of Luke, I got one thing I want to say. And... Um, you know, we go to funerals and people love to give flowers. Well, I want to take this time out and give flowers to these two wonderful, beautiful young ladies next to me that support me, that believe in me, that trust God, that pray for me. But one thing that I appreciate is that they're here. You know, I know that there are some organizations who may say, well, we don't believe in women pastors. Well, God had prophets and evangelists. He had female ministers in the Bible. So I believe that God can use a woman to teach all of us something. But I want to thank them for their dedication to the word of God, to God first and foremost, and then to supporting Peniel Covenant Christian Center, supporting me as the senior pastor of Peniel Covenant Christian Center, and for just being on this platform with me every Wednesday. So will y'all just give them a hand clap of praise, a shout out to Pastor Sabrina and Pastor Angela who continually stand with me because sometimes I may not feel like it but yet and still they won't let me give up they won't let me quit they just going to keep pushing me you know and supporting me so I just want to say thank you and that I love both of you thank you love you too baby. all right yep. <laughs> even though I am the youngest of the bunch at the <laughs> table right now <laughs> oh. y'all ready to move forward all right, all right. Well, hey, I'm going to stop playing around. Ah, praise, praise the Lord. Mr. and Mrs. Wilson, I see y'all out there. Love you guys. Amen. All right, y'all want to do like a little brief recap? We're going back to Luke. We're going to finish up tonight prayerfully, hopefully. Luke 6, we had started at verse number uh, 27 last week. Um, you know, we was talking... First about the thing, boy, that Jesus required of us in the law of love, as it's called in my Bible, those those first couple of scriptures that we managed to get through. And um, I tell you, it was that first one. That first part where, where Jesus said, love your enemies. Yeah. You know, that right now is actually could be a whole series all in all by itself, loving your enemies. How many of us since last Wednesday we found ourselves having to revert back to this word, this scripture, and remember what God said to our hearts about loving your enemies? Maybe somebody said something about you. Maybe somebody did something to you. Maybe somebody lied on you. And they know they lied on you, but they won't even apologize. They won't even make it right. And you had to forgive them. Anything you ladies want to, want to just add to that? No, I, w I would just say um, this week, I didn't know it was something, but I guess it is. 
Because if you hear someone's name and it make you feel like, mm, mm, some kind of way, then it's something there that you need to pray about. So I found myself in that situation this week. Nothing bad happened. Person never did anything bad to me. It's just that we don't have great communication with each other and don't communicate often. And someone mentioned the name and I went, like, oh no, no, mm -mm. I don't want to be involved with nothing with that person. They said, why not? I don't know. I just mm -mm. let me let me pray about that. Mm -hmm. So it's something there. I still haven't figured out what that something is, but it must be something in me because I know for a fact. As far as I know, the person never did anything to hurt me. Can I just respond to that for that four minutes? That what she just said can cause you to miss out on an opportunity that God has for you. It could. Remember uh, Sunday in my message, I preached about now, mm -hmm. at this present time, at this present moment. When you harbor unforgiveness and bitterness, it hinders you from walking through doors or from the resources God has set in place to bless you. Mm -hmm. The same people who offended you or the same people who you harbor stuff against are some of the same people God is trying to get you to forgive you because he, he already orchestrated it or set it up so your blessing will come through them. Because mm -hmm. he's not going to bless a mess. No, he's not. And, and, and the thing is, they don't even know you got a, 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 an, a, or an offense or that you're harboring unforgiveness. Well, and also you brought up uh, last week uh, in Brain Change about the enemy within us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of times it revealed the enemy within us. Mm -hmm. What we have to deal with. Yes. Mm. Then the next part says, do good to them which hate you. Mm. Mm. Ooh. Do good to them that hate you. Treat them good. Treat them better than what they treat you. That's that right there. That, that, that sums it up. See, in this Christian walk, a lot of times, and I'm gonna say it this way: as black folks, we go to church and we've been to church. And we just going through this life because we waiting on the better life in the sweet by and by. Mm -hmm. Baby, God got a better life for you right here. And what some people call the nasty now, now. <laughs> but I want to say this. You can't get God's best if you're harboring stuff. Amen. One thing about the Lord's Prayer that Jesus said. He said, Lord, give us this day on earth mm -hmm. as it is in heaven. Mm -hmm. If there's no unforgiveness in heaven, why do we want to harbor it on earth? If there's no mistreatment in heaven, why do we want to mistreat on this earth? I want to enjoy my life here and when I get to heaven. Well, the word says that Jesus said that he came that we might have and enjoy life. Yeah. But the choice is, is ours, whether we're going to enjoy our life or not, or whether we're going to uh, be negative and hold on to unforgiveness and treat people any kind of way, because um, what goes around will come back around to you. What you, what you sow, you will reap it in some way, form, or fashion. Amen. Well, I mean, we have we have instructions here from the Savior to do mm -hmm. something. He don't. He will never ask us to do something that we can't that you do. Can't do. He empowered us to Less be able to do. Amen. What you know what he says here, but it goes against our old hate, our old man, our old nature. So he said, love, uh, you know, love, love your enemies and do good to those that um, hate you. That's what he meant, and that's what we have to do. Yeah, just gotta do it. Yeah, and it's not—it's not something that. If, if the more we think something is hard, the harder it'll be. Jesus well, say it's so easy to love, mm -hmm. but we say, okay, I'm gonna love you because you love me. That ain't easy. That's I mean, not that's, love. I'm serious. You're doing tit for tat. Yeah, that's that. Anybody can do that. Because you love mm -hmm. even if someone do something you don't like. If you really love them, you still love them. Right. Life fast. Let's say like if you marry and or, or you dating somebody and they do some 
and they really piss you off. Then they ask you, hey, can you scratch my back? <laughs> but now, you don't believe that they have the huck spot, the audacity, <laughs> the nerve to ask you, they want me to scratch their back. I can, but I'm not. <laughs> and then you decide, oh, yeah, 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 uh-huh, I'm going to scratch your back. I'm going to get this joker back. Oh, no, no one would do that. And you decide, I'm going to scratch your back. I'm thinking about scratching it hard. I'm going to scratch, uh-huh, hard. No, no yes. one would do that. Yes, yes, yes. No way. Yes. Now, that's evil. Christians do no, it? No, no, yes. no, no one would do that. Uh, okay, maybe in her world. <laughs> but I'm just, just saying. Evil. But still, let's, say, no, I'm let's not, just no, be real. I'm not your back. So you telling me, I have never got you to the point where I pissed you off, and right after I, after I, you got mad at me and said something, I said, "Babe, can you do this for me?" You just did it lovingly. No, just said, no, I'm not doing it. Why not? It's like when you say, "Could you get me some water?" After I've got all snugly in the bed in my right spot. Could I go get you some water? No, you, no, you don't ask me to go get me. You say, you want to go get me some water? And on the inside, I said, now I know you want me to get in the water. And I said, no, I don't want to get you in the water. And I pulled a cup up over me. No. If you would say, could you go get me some water? That's a different question. But your question is usually, could you, would you go? Okay, but still, I'm going back go? to my, my original question. No, I wouldn't have. No, I just tell you, no, I'm not going to do it. Why not? I'm not going to do it to scratch, that hurts you. They ain't going to be scratching my back. It could have been anything. No, if I don't want to do something, I'm just going to say no. There's, well, I'm not going to do something I'm gonna and I'm going to be, it's kind of like someone cooking for you. And then that, that's oh, angry food. I'm not eating angry food. Like, because no love went into that. So if I ask you to do something and you don't want to do it, then just simply say, no, I will appreciate your no better than you doing it grudgingly. Well, that's why the word says, yes, Joe. let your yay be yay. And your, your nay be nay. nay. And I'm not afraid to say all that no. kind of stuff. And that, that's There's what power in your words. And mm -hmm. if I'm not going to want to do it and I really don't want to do it because I'm not going to do it to the best. Whatever it is, to the best of my ability, and I'm gonna have an attitude doing it. And I'm gonna have a look on my face, and I'm so I'm just gonna say no, so we both can be happy. So you always say no. I'm just saying. Now why are we on me tonight? <laughs> we I know you. That, I, that, that, that was just the example. It said, you know, when you loving, when you loving, Sometimes love you don't do always you don't mean do. love yeah. don't always mean you say yes. Love That's don't always right. mean you do what somebody is asking you to exactly. do. Exactly. Love just means that you're not you're not wishing any harm or trying to do anything to offend or to it's try patient, to bring them it's down. Kind, it's so, gentle. so love means even though you don't make me mad, I ain't gonna bust you in the head right now. Or else I'm not gonna bust you in the head. <laughs> I'm just gonna go ahead okay. on. Well, how was your day at work? <laughs> oh, I had a wonderful day at work. You sure? Listen, it was raining. Don't fight for the no, 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 oh, listen. No, 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 listen, listen. This is real, and we're being real. Mm -hmm. And there are some people out there who may be struggling with when people make them angry, and then them same people turn around and ask them to do something, and they won't do it, or else they do it, but they do it angrily. And like you That's just why said, I said no. but maybe they just haven't gotten to the point to where they are able to say no. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm saying. So now what happens is they see another side. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you have to be okay with saying no. Mm -hmm. Because some of y'all kindergarten classes taught y'all caring and sharing. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we don't feel that way. Mm -hmm. So, yes, we love, but at the same time, there's a human side mm -hmm. of us that we still got to deal with on this Christian walk. There's still a portion of us, our mind has to be renewed. And so, therefore, that's when we recognize we need the Holy Ghost, we need Jesus to help us, especially with, with, with these relationships that we have. That's all I'm saying. Well, you, we have to begin, you know, love and charity begins at home when we share, share it abroad. You know, when you start to, if you have someone in your, in your household that uh, you're having, that, that's become your enemy, 
because they're asking you to do something after they have uh, offended you or hurt you or said something against you, that's a, that's a great uh, place to, you know, to, to practice that. Yeah. You know what I'm it saying? Is. Because if I know that you love me, but you've become my enemy because you've done something to hurt me, then that's my opportunity right there to, you know, grow and develop and be able to sit down and talk and express what's going on so that I can uh, walk in love the right way. Amen. Because sometimes, you, as you said, if you if you offended me, you could be my child, my husband, whoever, and you and have done a conversation about that. Yeah, and you come right back around and ask me to do something, then uh, uh, the old man may stand up versus the new man. And, and, you know, and, so that's just being real. So if the old man stand up and I say something or do something that you say scratch my back and I scratch you so hard, you're going to jump out the seat. <laughs> make it scared yeah. Exactly. So you already know, okay, that, now see, that wasn't Christ right there. That was me. And, and see, but you 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 said something. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about it. But maybe at that point, you can't talk. You can't talk. So I'm going to say this. With your enemies or anybody that does something against you, against you First thing you do is go pray about it. You know, like like the shirt you had. Go go off. Go pray. Go pray about it first. Then you go back and talk. Cause I I can say like this. Sabrina and I've been married almost twenty five years. I've never been a person to argue. I don't like to argue. You want to argue with me? It's gonna be one person there. Cause I walk out the door on you in a minute. You know, go get, go get a golf club and a ball or something. Or just go look up at the sky, look at the birds, <laughs> at the trees. Why? Cause I'm not gonna argue. You know, you want to yell, you can yell all day long, but unfortunately, I'm the type of man, I'm not going to yell at you. you That's know? good. Sometimes silence is a, is a form of yelling. Sometimes when you don't say anything, that's a form of, uh, of, of saying something. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that makes the situation worse, and you best to walk off. You know, yeah. that's the best thing to do. So sometimes you have to walk off in order to be able to come back and be able to discuss it in a more calm manner. Um, someone put a comment. It says, um, I understand that I have to um, forgive over and over again. However, when it keeps happening, I distance myself. I will love and forgive you, but I'm not going to continuously put myself out there to be hurt. And you know, that's what we said last week about sometimes you, you, you forgive and you have to social distance yourself. You have to love from a distance. To where you don't put yourself in a position to where you are continually getting hurt by the same person or the same group or whatever. So sometimes you, you, you have to put yourself away from that because, let's face it, when a snake reveals itself and you know it's a poisonous snake, snake you don't keep uh, messing with that snake because you know sooner or later... That snake gonna bite you and could possibly kill you. If someone shows you who they are, believe them. Yeah. Pray for them. Amen. Believe them. Don't try to fix it. it. That's true. And and most times for us Christians, a lot of times we distance ourselves and we stay distant. Mm -hmm. That's not the way of Christ. You know, we have to go and pray. Most times when you go and pray, so pray. you know, when you, you go and pray you about something, God will give you an opportunity. Mm -hmm. But as you said earlier, when that name come up or whatever, you're still feeling some kind of way or that person may have changed you cross your path path again it may have changed but because of the hurt you know instead of put giving it to Christ Christ said you know you gotta get, put all of this stuff on on me because mm -hmm. I care for you a lot of times we harbor that and we hold that and when we're dis distancing ourselves it's to go and pray so that right. God can give us yeah. strength so that we will be able to go on and bear whatever we gotta bear but no don't keep putting your head in the chopping block because be the catalyst God yeah. uses oh, to save their exactly, soul exactly because it's a soul so if you yep. put, it's not like you tempting the situation oh, I'm going to put my head down here no the situation came up where okay now you gotta come come across this person again mm -hmm. so now you should have been, been in a position of, of more whole to be able to deal with them in a different way because you went away to pray exactly and let me say something thank you Holy Ghost when you distance yourself from that person, mm -hmm. it's like if you have a surgery or you get injured and they have to go in and operate and now you got to go to rehab. Mm -hmm. When you go to pray, you go to rehab. Mm -hmm. This is God's time to repair you, mm -hmm. to help She's make so you better. And God. then you take steps to get back to where he called you to be. Not where you were, but where he called you to be. So that prayer time, that's your rehabilitation time. That's your time 
to spend with God so God can do what? So his nurses, so his doctors, the Amen. Holy Spirit, the angels of the Lord, mm -hmm. the word of God, so they can work on you, so they can work on that place of hurt and they can rehab and he can renew, he can refresh, he can restore, you know, he can rejuvenate your life in that area so that what? You won't get injured like that again. Well, that's true. And that's a great analogy. Yeah. But it's sometimes too, as well as that, um, like a soldier. Mm -hmm. You know, when you know that you're on assignment and you know that God has called you to a set place, you when you go, you come back and you go to the medics and they take care of you. Then you go back out and you go back and get ready to go back to in the battle again. You don't say, okay, well, I'm not. I'm, I'm not, not going to do that. Get in that because I'm, I'm going to get hurt. Well, listen, that's why you need the armor. That's why you need to put the full armor on so Amen. that you'll be able to stand Amen. in that evil day because the evil day is not going anywhere. It's coming. It's coming. So it's not going, whether it be through that person or this person, or that person, or whatever. It's coming. And, and as the body of Christ, we have to be able to show Christ to the world. And how else are we going to show Christ to the world? If we, we go off get in the and we draw, draw back, if we surrender, put up the red up a white flag every time, you know, and just keep distancing ourselves. That's not going to show Christ Amen. to the world. Amen. We're here Amen. to show Christ in his character in the midst of an enemy. Amen. Amen. I, Amen. I just saw as a, a football team, you're on the team, mm -hmm. and you're out there playing, <laughs> you're going to get hit. Mm. Eventually, you're going to get hit. Yes. And you may get hit and knocked out, and they yes. got to come bring the medics to bring you off the field. Yes. But they take you to the side. They give you some Gatorade or some water, pat you up, give mm -hmm. you a pep talk, and say, go on back out there. That's we right. need you. Injured and all. Injured and all. Let me give you a shot right, right. there. A shot of this God love. Right. This God peace. And go back out there and try it again. Souls need to be saved. Jesus. People need to and, see Christ. And guess what? Everything you need is on the battlefield with you. Mm -hmm. On that ship with you. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, God got it right there. When I was in the Navy, that ship left. We had the cooks. We had the doctors. We had everything we needed on that ship. So, all right, let's move on. Let's move on. We, we, we're going we're gonna to jump down to verse number 31. We're going to start tonight's topic. Mm -hmm. And it says, And as ye would that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. For if ye love them which love you, what thank have ye? For sinners also love those that love them. Let's, let's just look at 31 and 32. Mm -hmm. He says, and as ye would that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. I want to tell you something. I cannot think of this um this pastor's name, but he spoke to us some years ago. Came to a training. I was at my police training. And he said something, and it still sticks with me today. And the scripture said, and Jesus is talking about love right here. Mm -hmm. And I want to say it this way. Do you want people to treat you the way you treat yourself? Huh? That's a loaded question. No. Do you want people to treat you the way you treat yourself? If you don't take care of you, why would you expect for somebody else to take care of you? If you don't invest in you, why do you expect other people to invest in you? If you don't think you're beautiful, why do you want other people to call you beautiful? Mm -hmm. If you don't think you're smart, why should I call you intelligent? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You want people to treat you the same way or better than the way that you treat yourself. But in turn, you got to treat other people good too. Mm -hmm. If you want to be respected, you got to treat yourself with respect and treat other people with respect. See, I can't disrespect these two women right here. First of all, they have my head. And I ain't going to try. But they respect themselves. So I'm not going to disrespect them. I can't talk to them no any kind of way. They're not going to stand for that. I got, let me tell you something. I got some people in my family I don't even play with. <laughs> I'm serious. I got an auntie. She's probably watching right now. My aunt Willie Mae. I play with Jesus before I play with her. Her auntie Geraldine probably watching right now. I don't play with her neither. It's not a bad thing, but that's the kind of respect that I have for them. Not saying I got any less for Angela, Pastor Angela here, because I don't. 
But there's just certain things that they just don't do. They'll jack them up. <laughs> that too. But it's just that you treat people the way you want to be treated. And at the same time, you treat yourself the way God wants or the way the Bible says yeah. you ought to be treated. You love yourself. Okay, Holy Ghost. I'm a male. Let me step out my pastor role for a minute. If you got a daughter, you don't want nobody to treat your daughter wrong. You don't want nobody to disrespect your daughter. You don't want nobody to look at your daughter in a certain way. If that's the case, teach your daughter to respect herself and to put some clothes on before she leave the house. Mm -hmm. Huh? Or the words she say. How she carries right. herself. You got a son. Don't let your son walk out of the house in any kind of way. You teach your sons to have respect for themselves so that way other people will have respect for them too. But if you don't have respect, if you don't set the tone of treatment in your house, then how do you expect other people outside of your house to treat you better? See, people, you can't talk to me any kind of way because I'm not going to stand for it. And not that I'm better than you, I'm a son of the Most High God. And I know my father will chastise me, but at the same time, my father loves me, and my father demands that I respect him. He demands that I respect my brothers and my sisters, but he also demands that my brothers and my sisters respect me. So we set the tone for how people treat us. We set that tone. I can't treat my wife any kind of way. Because she's not going to stand for it. She's going she gonna to check me on. That's the bottom line. So we have to be cognizant or mindful. You set the tone for how people treat you. Mm -hmm. Well, Pastor James, I would say sometimes um, people don't know their worth or their value. Amen. If they just think, I'm just lucky to be in this group or... I'm just lucky they let me sit by them, or I'm just lucky I was able to attend, or that it's some gift for you to be there with them. You're seeing more value in someone else, or in some particular set, or group, or church, or ch church in the group, or out in the world, wherever it is. You're seeing more value in the person or the thing than you're actually seeing in yourself what you're bringing to the table because it's a reason people want to be around you. Amen. Amen. So, and he tells us, and the other side, do ye also to them likewise. So you have respect for people the way you want to be respected. You know, there's just certain things you can't do in my presence. You know, when, I'm, when I was doing my job as a police officer and, and I was on you know, the school grounds or whatever, and I'm in conferences with parents and their children. The children, I don't care how you treat a, a child treated their parent at home. In my presence, you had to have respect for your mama or your daddy, but especially your mama if she was a single woman and doing her best. I probably want to throw a child through a window. I, okay. But why? Because I have that kind of respect for a mother. You can't disrespect my mother. And my mama grown. She can hold her own. But in my presence, you can't disrespect her. You can't talk about her even if she's not in my presence. You know, I'm I'm just that. I want people to, you treat people with respect. You have to be respectful and you have to command respect. You have to demand respect. Don't let nobody treat you any kind of way because then they think, you're, you're nothing. No, you're a child, you're a son or a daughter of the Most High God. You're a chosen people. You're a royal priesthood. You're holy unto God. Well, God yeah. made you with a purpose in mind. You know, Pastor, sometimes how someone is treated growing up, they could, even though we, you can tell them all that when they get to church, but you got to change your way of thinking. It's, That's true. it's a mentality. It's, it's the way you think about yourself. And even though the pastor may be telling you, people may be telling you, but until you believe it yourself. So sometimes it's a process 
of getting people to even respect and love and do self-care on themselves. Self-care is so important for men and for women, but right. sometimes they may have heard certain words or been called certain things for so long, they begin to believe, they adapted that and believe that. So um, I'm just encouraging you to take your identity from the word. Yes. Learn who you are through the word and treat yourself accordingly. And watch how other people will treat you. Amen. Amen. All right, then. Verse 32 says, For if ye love them which love you, what thank ye have? What thank have ye? For sinners also love those that love them. So Jesus is speaking to his disciples and telling them, You can't only love people that love you. You got to love sinners, otherwise we ain't going to have no more Christians. So you got to love me, people. You got to love them all. People all people. Cut you off in traffic. You got to love all people. Put up their middle finger at you for no reason. You love don't know all people. Well, how, how, what kind of love you say? Oh, Way so. back? Like, what you now, mean love them? Unconditional, unrestrained, I, I hear Godly that. love. I hear okay, that. Let's go back to the previous sin, uh, uh, statement we just made. Mm -hmm. Demanding respect. Right. So how can you? How can you? At that analogy that you just used. Go ahead. How can you uh, show love to someone that's that that's not respecting you or, or disrespecting you? you? Oh, that's when I like a, like like I went back before. I'm gonna distance myself and I'm gonna pray for that person. But also while I'm praying for that person. I'm going to pray for me. I'm going to ask God to help me stay out of bitterness, stay out of anger, stay out of malice with them, mm -hmm. not to build up any animosity toward them. So I'm going to pray for them. However, at the same time, yeah. if I'm mature enough as a Christian, if, if I'm mature enough, I don't want to see harm done, done to that person. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pray for God to have his angels and camp round about them because I recognize that the issue that we have, it's not me. It's, it's the issue that's in them. I'm the target of They're that issue. Out. They could be lashing out yes. at someone else who didn't do anything to them. Like, I'm lashing out. Someone say I'm lashing out at women because my mother wasn't there for me growing up. Exactly. So now I'm mad at all women. Or I'm lashing out at men because I don't know who my daddy is. I'm feeling abandoned. I'm feeling trapped. I'm only going to let you get so far before I start lashing out at you. Um, but I would even say, if it's a person, someone that you are going to have to be around, because we were talking about like keeping distance. But sometimes it could be someone that you're going to have to be around every day. Like on your job, you may have to work together In to church. get things accomplished mm -hmm. um, for whatever reason you're around them. So you have to pray and ask God to give you wisdom, spiritual discernment, give you strength, give you the love that I use this scripture. Lord, give me this day my daily bread and I incorporate more than food in that. Give me the strength I need today. Give me the compassion Amen. and the love I need today. Give me the patience that I need today, God, because God already knows what we're going to face before we get there. That's why it's so important before you leave your home that you pray, that you ask God to protect you, that you commission his angels to go out before you because God knows all things. So ask God to show you how to deal with that person. And when it comes to a, a point of maybe you sense that the heat is rising or the person is getting angry, remember that a soft answer mm -hmm. turns away wrath. And if you're talking soft and they continue, then it's okay. You've done your part. Walk away. If you can walk away, walk mm -hmm. away and try to go to someone else who may be in charge where you all can say, listen, I know we're on the same team working together, but there, there's an issue here. I'm not quite sure where it's coming from, but I'm requesting that we have a sit-down meeting with not myself, them, and, and a supervisor because yeah, I want to do the win. best I can on this job, and I need to settle this so I can do my job effectively. Amen. If that's Definitely in your workplace or something like that. And deal with stuff like that because a lot of times when we say love, you know, and don't give some practical ways and uh, some examples to show how to how that's played out or how that's walked out. It can seem and a little. Sometimes we think love as being um, 
Doormat. Giving them stuff, mm-hmm. like letting them have their way, just being the yes, yes person mm-hmm. to them or spending money on them. You don't have to do that, doesn't necessarily mean you got to hang out with someone because you're loving them. You don't have to Amen. hang out with them, you're just not being rude, nasty, and disgusting and mm-hmm. thinking those kind of things because God even knows our thoughts. Mm-hmm. You're going to believe the best, you're going to hope the best for them, you're going to pray for them. It's real hard to say mad at someone or be mean towards someone. That you're actually praying with. Oh, that's, my God. That's you like you can't do it. Uh-huh. You're praying for their well being. You're praying for God, whatever situation. Because, like Pastor James said, it may not be you, but you're just the target. You're it's the sounding board. Uh, here, here's an example. Say long ago. Y'all say long ago. Long, long ago. ago. When my kids were little, I worked in middle school. And I would be just so frustrated with work and tired. And when I get home, they could drop a glass of the, you know, the sippy juice. They done squeezed it, and I had that cream color furniture. And now it's on the front, and I go off like a bullet, like a bullet, because it's not the fact that they just spilled the juice on the carpet or the furniture. But I'm already frustrated from work. I'm already tired, and I didn't take the time to calm down, to relax. Um, and I recognized that through an email. Someone sent the email with a situation kind of like that saying, um, you're at your house and someone um, break break a glass. And you say, oh, that's okay, I'll get it up. And then one of your children dropped the glass or your husband dropped the glass or your wife dropped the glass or whatever this thing was, broke your TV, and you start cussing them out. You going ballistic. But the person over there from the church or a neighbor or from your job there and oh, it's okay, you're getting it up. And God checked me with that email. And I, so I had to put something in place. And my thing was, we're going to get a new rule. When, when we get home, I need 30 minutes. And I would set a timer and tell them that they can go in their room and play. They can run around. They can do whatever they like that went within the confines of the rules I've given them. But I need 30 minutes so I can relax. So I would go in my room and do me some relaxation things, put some music on, pray, and then I come back out and I'm ready. Mm -hmm. So you have to give yourself something to do if you find yourself in those situations. And you know, I'm going to say something. And that's why it's good that when you first come home, put on you some uh, praise music Mm -hmm. and just thank God for a few minutes, even if it's nothing but five minutes. It takes the edge off from your job and everything else you've been dealing with before you got home. So the same love that we're talking about loving your enemy with and praying for those who, who despitefully use or use you and blessing those that curse you and those who are slap you. And Jesus said, give them another cheek to slap you on there or took away stuff from you. You need to have that in your house. Your house needs to be that place. That when you come home, everything else outside that happened outside the house doesn't matter. Because your house is a home. And it should be, your house should be a, a, a house of God, should be a house of joy, mm-hmm. should be a house of love, should be a house of peace. Your home should be the place you desire to be. Because when you get there, you already know what, 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 that when I was here, the presence of the Lord was here. That when I left, the presence of the Lord went with me, but the presence of the Lord was still in my house. And when I come back home, the presence of the Lord is going to enfold me, it's going to engulf me, it's going to encapsulate me, it's going to surround me to where now I'm in his presence and it affords me the opportunity now to love on my family, not to take my frustrations out on my family. You know, not to lash out at my spouse or my children, at my dog, at the ants running or, or, or whatever it is. I don't take my frustrations out on them because what I did was I didn't come home, you know, just saying, man, no people on the job. No, I came home. I turned on my praise music, my worship music. I got in the presence of God and all that pressure that I was feeling from work. I gave it to God. First Peter 5 and 7. I cast all my care on God. So now the love of God that's in me, I can share that love with those Amen. that are in my house. Amen. I can be the mother and father, the brother, the sister, the aunt, or whoever I need to be to those who are in my house. And because now that I took time 
to go in my secret place with God and to spend time with God. Now that God has poured in me and removed that junk out of me, now I can begin to share this love with my family. Pastor, someone said, must I love? What if the person don't want me to love them? Like Jesus said, when you go into a city and they don't accept you, when you leave that city to wipe the dust from your feet, if you don't try to love somebody and they don't want to love, you have fulfilled the law of Christ. You love them. You can't make nobody love you. You can't force your love upon nobody. You move on and you just continually pray for them. Pray that God's will be done. And don't stress yourself out because it's their choice. Because we're, I hope, I don't know what kind of love they were talking about. So I'm thinking they're talking about I'm the talking brotherly about love. Pain. Just, um, if oh, someone yeah. don't want to be your friend, that's fine. But if you have to be in a situation where you're around them, yeah. like a family member, or you're at work, or you're in an organization together or something, you're going to have to have interaction with that person. You don't have to be all chummy with them and hanging out and going places beyond that organization, but you have to be civil, you have to be kind, and you have to believe the best and hope for the best for people. You got something you want to say um, before I go old school for a minute? Well, but she was using the different levels of love, and, and like she said, they, they didn't explain what, what yeah, the situation they just said was. What they said. But if you're talking about what we're talking about, you know, uh, agape, then... That love don't don't stop. Mm -hmm. That love continue to go, and that love continue to give. And then we gotta realize too, it's not coming from out of us. It's coming out of the Holy Spirit. It's coming out of God. Because if it was coming out of us, we're gonna tap out. You gonna run out. You gonna run out. So we get frustrated, we exactly. <laughs> so it's gotta flow out of the Holy Spirit, out of us onto whoever, mm -hmm. and we gotta go in the presence of God in order for it to flow. Otherwise, we gonna keep. You gonna keep what running. you said there. Yes. If we're not staying in the presence yes. of God, if you're not communing with God, not just when the situation get bad. Ooh. When things get bad, we can't run and now go. Oh God, fix it, fix it. I'm believing you, Jesus. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you got to have a relationship yeah, really. with the Father. You got to have that word in you, and we know what's in you when a button is pushed that you don't like. Mm -hmm. What comes out? Mm -hmm. Um. Some of y'all that's old enough to remember. Remember the song, it started out, It takes a fool to learn <laughs> that love don't, don't love, love nobody. nobody. Stop. Love is a gift. Love, it takes Sabrina and I giving the gift of love to each other, to love each other. If I'm giving her love, and she's not giving me back love. Her love. Well, people could be looking at it as we're married. So you no, 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 no. Like a it, it doesn't or, matter who it is. A different level of love. Love has to be reciprocated. Okay. Even yes, the agape is unconditional love. Mm -hmm. But but when we're talking about love between people, a lot of times we're either talking about brotherly love. Or if it's intimate, we're talking about arrows. However, love is a gift. And the way that gift works is a gift, there's a giver and there's a receiver. God has unconditional love for his for, for the world. But it doesn't mean that the world is going to accept God's love and love him back. That's how we get non-believers, sinners, and atheists or whatever. You're, if, if, if you're giving somebody love and they don't want to receive your love, stop trying to give it to them. No, no, no. I'm, I'm not. No, no, no. I'm not talking about agape. You can't. Well, yeah, that's, well, what, that, that's what we're talking about. I, I know that's what yeah. we're talking about. But what I'm saying is don't try and force your love upon nobody. If they don't want it, you have to step back and you continue. Remember what we said earlier. Said, you continue to you pray for them. them. You still love them, love them but yet and still, don't you don't force that love on nobody because you can't make nobody love you. I don't care who it's it like is. It's like trying to make someone uh, give their life to Christ. You can't force it upon them. Because, you can pray for them. Mm -hmm. You can lead them. You can talk to them. But 
We all have a choice, just like forgiveness a is a choice. Yeah, yes, yes, it is. To, re to receive a gift from me, if I go in my wallet right now and I take out a hundred dollar bill and I say, "Here, James, I want want to give you this hundred dollar bill." If you say, "What you giving me? Giving me that hundred dollars for? I don't want it." Mm -hmm. So you give it back. I can't make you take the hundred. Exactly. And, and plus, the hundred dollars is there, but if I don't want it. You don't. I don't want it, but and don't try. Away. But 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 it's not being taken away. Right. But don't try to force it on me if I don't no, want it. No, Jesus, the Lord would never force because He He say I offer myself freely. Yeah. Yes. Because you have to receive Except freely. So free. as His children in the world, we offer His love freely. freely. And yeah. if the person refuses it, then we we have not we I have nothing to do with how they receive it. And you so know, we just I, have to offer, I it. offer it, and that's up to them and God how they receive it. it. Yeah, because think about it. Jesus said, "A prophet is without honor, even his own in his own country. His own family didn't want to receive him, but he still died. For but him. he still died for. Him. So what? So what did he do? He left. Yeah, but true. but but does that change the love that he had for them? No, it doesn't. It just changed the fact that he wasn't going to no longer try and force or give them this free gift when they didn't want to take it. You it know, was still available. It was still available, but yet it's still. And, that, and that's the point right there. As you just made it still available. A lot of times with us, it's no longer available. No, we cut you off. Once I'm I try done. to love you and you didn't want to receive love, then I'm, I'm done. See, that this, this is where you run into a problem with when we say, okay, I've tried. You love, move on. Because what if that person comes exactly. back and call oh, you? Right. Yeah. So, so that's why you don't, with, with the we don't call that, that God. Now we, go deep, we change our cell phone number yeah, sometimes. We make it where you can't find We block you. Now, can I just say something <laughs> to, to what you just said? If a person comes back to you and they repent, they ask you for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Now that's, the, that's when you show this love of God that's in you to them. No, 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 I'm just saying. Well, yeah. I would if, even say. If they're, just one quick minute, mm -hmm. give me 65 seconds. If they're trying to repent to you when you tried to love them and they didn't want to be loved, maybe they, they're just not at the level of understanding where you are, mm -hmm. but then they have matured. Now they're coming back to you. Don't close that door of love mm -hmm. because maybe at that point, they, like I said, they're not mature enough. Because we all have been immature. We all have came walking like babies. You know, we had to grow up. So therefore, we have to, yeah, we still love, but it doesn't mean that if 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 at this time I'm trying to give Sabrina a gift, because I give her Sabrina gifts and she says she don't want it. She probably felt like in the time that maybe I should have bought this gift at this time. Maybe something was going on. So she told me, give me the receipt or else just take it back. Mm -hmm. Does that mean she don't want me to give her a gift no more? No. It just means at that time, she was not ready to receive that gift. But then... Yeah. Or at that time, that I, was the wrong gift. Because yeah. you, when you're talking about between you and her, there's different love languages. Yeah, so but when you're talking about the love that you're showing between God, that's a different, no, that's a different, different love. I know so, there are different yeah. levels of love, but I'm just so, saying is that we're talking about unconditional love. Right. Yes. The thing was, the comment was, must they love mm -hmm. when a person don't want to be loved? Mm -hmm. And at that point, your love changes to where you still love them, but you don't try to force that love on them. If they don't want to deal with you, you step back and you always uplift them in prayer to God, that God keeps them, protects them, their well-being or whatever. And God will, in turn, like we say, God will have wisdom. He will open that door, and they'll come back to you. Sometimes people come back to you, and they explain what was going on with them at the time. And at that time, we don't turn a deaf ear. We are like the Father, and we should embrace them because maybe they needed that time. They needed that space because of what they were dealing with. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm saying about the love. Your love is always, as a Christian, going to be unconditional. But you can't force that unconditional love on somebody who don't want it. You went over those 65 seconds. <laughs> See, God Go just brought back to my memory. So. Go ahead. <laughs>
This is the lady stopwatch. <laughs> so y'all don't know this pastor stopwatch right here. Well, that's okay. a great question. I, I was going to say, love, you, you don't have to be in someone's presence to still show them Ooh. love. I was going to say, let's say for someone who don't want to receive love from you and you have prayed about it and they still don't want to, you know, work with you at, on the job or you're trying to be friendly with them at church and they don't want to have nothing to do with you and you step back. As Pastor Angela said, don't step out of their life. Still have yourself available because God loves at all times. Now, if it's a violent situation mm -hmm. and something that's putting you in danger, then I would say stay away, stay mm -hmm. away, stay away. But even in your conversation, this is what I meant by you don't have to be around somebody to love them. You don't get on your phone Come and on. call everybody up tell, and tell them about the situation that's going on. Right. You don't badmouth them. Right. You, don't, you don't go negative toward them. You don't go sideways at them. You don't roll your eyes at them. When they're um, walking past you or someone bring their name up, you don't start telling the story of what happened. That is not walking in love. As my grandma would say, if you don't have nothing good to say, be quiet. Amen. But she say, shut up sometimes. But. So let me read this from um, Brother Harvey. He says, so we don't so we don't stop the love but put it on layaway so when they show back up, we can now love them. Yes, that's just what we do. He said, we don't stop the love, we put it on layaway. Well, well, the word layaway, the reason I don't like that particular choice I, I, I understand. Because when it's on layaway, they got to no, no, pay no. to get it off. Like, I'm he, just going to say, it. leave the store of love open and mm -hmm. the item of love is always there if they want to come in. He didn't put it all together. We lay it away. We still got it. It's still there. But we put it, it, it it's, it's still available. in our heart. It, it's still available. That door is available the same way God keeps the door to us, to us open. And that's a pretty good way to put it because when Christ died, he, when I had I, when Christ died over two thousand years ago, I wasn't even I wasn't even in the flesh yet. Okay, when I was going around doing everything I wanted to do, how I wanted to do it, whatever, when I wasn't even thinking about loving God like that, He was still loving me. He still died for me. He still gave His life for me. He still went to the grave for me. He still rose for me. So He's saying, I want you now, just as I did that for you. I want you to do this for other people that I placed in your world of influence. So we, we, a lot of times we say, well, I'm not going to lay my life down for this person because this person keeps giving me their behind the kiss. I've I already put myself on the line. Every time I put myself out there, they keep, you know, you know they chop in. my head off. They every time, it for me. Every time, you know, okay, this is this is the enemy because the enemy don't want the love of God to show. If I'm going to do what I did before I accepted Christ, then what, what was the point of me getting the love yeah. of Christ in my heart? I have to allow the love of Christ now to rule and reign in my heart richly so that I can do what Christ did, you know, because it's not me doing it. Because if, if, if it was me doing it, my old man say, you, every time I turn and try to love you, God telling me to come do this for you or say this for you or pray for you, you telling me you don't believe in God, so what you come telling me about God for? You telling me, you know, I don't want to have nothing to do with your God, I don't want to have nothing to do with you. Okay, I already realized that's the enemy using you. You know what I'm saying? The enemy is using you because he don't want you to really get the love of God. The love of God say, keep coming. The enemy and me say, forget you. <laughs> but the love of God say, no, keep coming because that's a soul. I put them in your life. You say, send I somebody else, Lord. Oh, I done said it. All these stuff just you got. said it. But no, this is your world of influence. Your, this is the ground that I gave you to sow into. This right is the ground now, I gave amen. you to water. You can do it because you can do all things through me. I'm going to strengthen you. Okay, let me go back and pray for some more, God, because that hurt me. Okay, I realize it hurt you, yes. but it hurt me too. Yes. When they beat me, when they spit upon me, when I got whipped, it hurt me, but I did all that for you. So I know you hurt. He said, in this world, you're going to have trials. You're going to have trials. That's your test have. to see what, exactly. what your love wants. So no cross, no crown. So you want the crown, but you don't want the cross. So if that, and then a lot, and even in the Bible days, they didn't just get it talked about. They got it physically. Yeah. Mm. They got it physically to prove yes, that they Lord. love God. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go try to witness to this person that you finna block me up and put me in jail. I'm going to tell you about the love of God. Block your own blessing. So it's different than the way the world, way the world sees it. Amen. All right, then. Let's go on to the next one. It says in 34, uh, 33, And if you do good to them which do good to you, what thing have you? For sinners also do even the same. And if you lend to them of whom ye hope to receive, what thing have ye? 
For sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much as gain. So basically, God is saying, we don't do tit for tat. We love because we love. And our love is not conditional. It's not based on, I'm going to love you because you do this for me. You know, or else I don't love you because you didn't do this for me. No, our love is un unconditional. We don't love the way the world loves. Amen. We don't use the same tricks and ploy schemes and schisms that the world does. What we do is when we love, we love real, we love hard, we love genuine. Amen. You know, we love through trials and tribulations, through ups and downs, in and out. We love. We love. And, you know, sometimes I, I, I like listening to people that's been married a long time. And those that are not afraid to be genuine with you, to tell you that Everything. we had some moments. Mm -hmm. You know, there were some times where I didn't know if we was going to make it, but we prayed and we talked to God and we thank God we still here. Amen. They loved each other unconditionally. And there were some conditions I still don't comprehend how you love that person through that. Amen. But by the grace Amen. of God, That's love. that That's grace of God, that unconditional love, that unearned, undeserved favor, by God's grace, they made it. So as Christians, our love is not based on what other people can or cannot do for us, how people treat us or don't treat us. It's based on God. And then realizing too, James, when we're doing this, God say, you're, 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 you're my extension. You're me in the earth. Mm -hmm. When they see you, they see me. They, they, I'm not representing myself. Yes. We're not representing ourselves. Mm -hmm. We're representing Jesus. Oh, so yeah. when they today. see Jesus, when they see us, they see Jesus. So they say, well, I, I've never seen Jesus. I don't know. Okay, you well, Jesus, when, I'm walking, when I'm walking and talking with you, I need to reflect the exactly the same way what Jesus and reflected then, when he was walking and talking on the earth. earth. So if they see no different than me, and then they see in the world, then I'm not reflecting the love of God. They're saying, like, why should I become a Christian? Why should I do the same thing? I'm exactly. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the power of God in me got to be different. And and when I when mm -hmm. I rebel against what oh, He man. say do, then it's gonna it's not gonna it's not gonna do me any good service or services. It's not gonna do anybody in my world of influence any good service. So when He say do it, He say, okay, now I'm becoming more like Christ. Amen. Amen. If I'm dying. I'm becoming more like Christ. So every time I do it, I got to die to myself. How you want to do it. And, and what he say do goes do against work. everything what we want to do. But when we begin to do it his way, you realize, Amen. oh my God, this works. I don't feel what I used to feel. Amen. When I used to feel hurt and broken, okay, as I begin to let him say, okay, I'm going to love this person, even though they, they despitefully use me. Okay, God, I know you say do that, but I don't feel like doing it. What I'm going to do it because you say I to do So as I begin to do what he say do, his, he empowers me. He strengthens me more and more to do it. And then I can say, okay, now, God, this is working. It's getting easier. Yeah. You know, so mm -hmm. I'm walking now in you and not in myself. So now I'm not getting hit, which would hit me when it would hit me or more. So that shield of faith blocking it now. That's the identity I am in Christ, not in myself. It's blocking all that stuff. Otherwise, I'll be, you know, could stay in the same. And, you know, and it's like this, you said this part right here. And one of my um, devotions the other day um, came out of John 15 and it said, uh, no greater love than this than a man lay down his life for a friend. Mm -hmm. So when you lay down your life and you put aside yourself, you're showing love. You're demonstrating love. And, and that's what it is. So we all got to remember be like Jesus. Let people see Jesus. Let them see the Jesus in you. Alright? But then it goes on to say in verse number 35 but love ye your enemies and do good, and lend, hoping for nothing again. And your reward shall be great, and ye shall be the children of the highest. For he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Be ye therefore merciful, as your Father also is merciful. See that? Once again, he tells us to do what? But love ye your enemies. He closed out this law of love talking about Loving our enemies again and being kind and doing good and laying and hoping for nothing in return. Mm -hmm. So basically, we let our lifestyle speak for us. We let what we do for Jesus Christ 
represent Christ and show the world who Christ is, not what Christ was. See, I several years ago there was this big thing WWJD. What would Jesus do? I like WDJD. What did Jesus do? Because whatever Jesus did, that's what I'm supposed to be doing. You know, I don't need to say what well, would he do. Because if I'm in the Word, if I'm spending time in the Word, I already know what he did. Mm -hmm. And one of the greatest things he did, he always showed love and he always pointed back to the Father. Mm -hmm. Everything he did, he always pointed back to the Father. So in everything that we do, we need to show, show the love of God. And we're not getting the glory. We're exalting the Father. And then guess what God will do? God will exalt us before men. Mm -hmm. We honor God. And he in turn honors us. Mm -hmm. But we got to make sure we have this love. This this love. We got to have it down. We got to have this as the foremost thing in our lives. When it comes to people. We got to show love. And love does not call for us to be a doormat. It doesn't call for us to let anybody walk all on us. And treat us any kind of way. No. Love is kind. Love mm -hmm. is gentle. Love is strong. In love, there are yeses and there's noes. In love, there's a time to speak and a time to be quiet. In love, yes, there's a time for correction. But we got to do it in love. Now, if, if you feel like you finna snap, that's your time to go pray. Run! Yes. <laughs> that's when you need to go into rehabilitation mode so that when they say, hey, you know, what's wrong? Where are you going? Oh, I'm finna go to rehab. Rehab? And just go to the bathroom. Close go the on. screen on your computer because yeah. you're, you're doing virtuals meeting now and they can see the look on your face. Talk Close the me. screen. Me. <laughs> but seriously though, you go to that place and you get away and you ask God to give you the strength you need to love now. Because love is not what want to come out of you. Mm -hmm. But we have to remember, we're called to love. We're called to, we are the ambassadors of Christ on this earth now. So we have to love even when it don't feel good. Mm -hmm. Amen? Anybody want to add anything? No, I got it. Star Wars, I tell you. <laughs> been a star watch his ass after eight. Yeah, God ain't giving no time. We did. But seriously, um, remember that. God will reward us. And remember, you are children of the Most High. God reigns on the just as well as the unjust. He's not a respecter of person. His love is unconditional. Amen. And he wants us to show that love to people of this world. And right now, our world can use Jesus. Not a little more, more Jesus. They can. They need to see Jesus in me. Jesus in you. They need to see that we are true. Not only do we hear the word, but we do the word and we walk the word out. Our world right now is in a state of confusion and they need to see some people who are not confused. You know, they, they, you know, hey, let them see you walk around with your mask on, but you still giving God praise. Let them see you praising God while you shopping with your glove on or whatever you're doing. Don't stop giving God praise because, yes, you're a believer, but this, but this body is still flesh. And you ain't ready for your new body yet because God got something to do, got something for you to do on earth, and you want to fulfill that. But out of all of that, let's remember to love. Amen. Love ain't, ain't no ain't no pushover. No. Love, love. You know, if, if there is injustice to people or things that can't speak up for themselves, love speaks for them. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. All right, then. That concludes. Uh, any closing thoughts from you, ladies, before we close out in prayer? It's like that teacher asking that last question, and then it's always somebody want to start talking. Nope. Making I want to get out of here. Well, I got five minutes to start on the subject. All right, y'all, let's bow our heads. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, we praise you, we give you glory and honor, we extend you, God. We thank you, Lord, for this conversation tonight, for this opportunity to share your word, to share your love. Lord God, we ask that right now that everyone who listened tonight, everyone who will listen in the future, that you will surround them with your love, with your protection, God. You will keep them. You will keep their families safe. Lord, may no evil befall them, neither shame the play come out of their dwelling. And Father, may this word, this conversation that we had tonight, may it come alive in their lives. Amen. May it be a light and hope uh, to their path, to their feet. And God, give them the strength they need to continue to walk out your word, to, to work out their own soul salvation, and to be strong in you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hey, listen, just we've got a couple of announcements. Don't forget, Friday morning at 7.15 a.m., we will be praying. Uh, on Facebook, on this channel at 7.15 a.m. Friday morning. Then catch us Sunday morning at 9 a.m. Hey, I'm Pastor James. This is my wife, Pastor Rena, Pastor Angelo. On behalf of our families and the Peniel Covenant Church Center, the Peniel Covenant Christian Center family, we want to thank you. God bless you. Have a wonderful night. Peace.